Are you talking to me now? I'm this trying to introduce you right now. But I wanted you to know <laughs> that the music that just played, that's the Oregon Symphony conducted by James DePriest, who went to Central High School in Philadelphia. And I called him and asked him to do an arrangement of this music for the show. And Jimmy DePriest did that. As you might guess now, we're back talking to Bill Cosby and the other members of the Cosby <laughs> Show cast as we celebrate their 25th anniversary. Just did, did anybody jump in here? That episode where you're all lip syncing and you're doing the, the singing that we saw before. Did, did somebody just say, roll the cameras and we'll see what we get? I mean, how did that come about? Well, Bill? I, I know that Mr. Cosby, he challenged me. And I remember he said, well, I'm going to do it better than you. So how that, old were you? Oh, my goodness, about six, maybe seven? You had no teeth. Yeah, I was missing my teeth. And so it was, Mr. He always did that. He did, We'd have challenges on who would know their lines first, who would do better at the lip syncing. And so I definitely remember that. And I'm competitive, so I was ready to go out there and just give it my all. It had to be so much fun to shoot scenes like that. It was a little bit uh, tender because the words that this child happens to be saying <laughs> it is not necessarily what you want a your six, six year old, old to be yeah, saying. Yeah. So I, I, I had to go, I mean, I had to get the blessings of the parents. And thankfully, they saw the humor in it, and, and it worked. Isn't it true that, that in some class somewhere they were teaching music and, and, and the teacher started talking about Ray Charles and the nighttime is the right time and someone raised their hand and said, no, no, that's not Ray Charles, that's Bill Cosby. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> exactly. Oh, what, 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 when, that was when, me. That was you who said that, yeah? <laughs> There's the scene where you guys, Malcolm, are playing, you and, and Bill are playing Monopoly. Mm. Is, a, is an incredible scene. It talks a lot about the relationship between these two characters. Sure. What do you remember about that? Well, I, I remember, um, I think what was most impactful for me was I think the scene Let's after this when Theo file. gives right. this wonderful now, speech about time. being regular people. I don't want to be a doctor like you or a lawyer like mom. I just want to be regular time. people, uh, and why can't you love me for me? And it was a wonderful, heartfelt speech. Uh, the audience <laughs> applauded. And, and I didn't and expect that. <laughs> the audience you, didn't expect, you didn't expect the yeah. applause? And, and, right. The audience, the audience applauded. They, they, they really felt where Theo was coming from. And the camera switches back to Cliff, and he says, Theo, that was the dumbest thing I have ever heard in my <laughs> life. And, and, and what was really important about that moment is, in any other sitcom, Theo would, would have given that speech, the music would have started, the father would have said, son, you're right. They would have hugged, and it would have been a tender, sappy moment. But... It was wonderful that that moment really set the tone for the show, that it was not going to be like every other sitcom. It was going to be, uh, it was really going to come from reality. So it was a, it really was a dumb speech, and, you know, and Cliff <laughs> called him on it, you know, and told him, no, you were going to study. You, you, you were afraid to study. You were going to study. Um, and then after that, he hugged him and told him that he loved him. That was a very, uh, I think that really set the tone for what this show was going to be about. If you run the show from day one to the end, you, you can follow Theo's journey as a young boy who is dyslexic with two parents who are not used to dyslexia and know nothing about it. And so Cliff and Claire go through all of the typical reactions to a dyslexic child while the dyslexic child who doesn't know that he's dyslexic goes through his reactions. He wants to stop he wants to quit. It hurts. It's painful to try and, and feel that you know you got things right and you, and you didn't get it correct. And the parents are, especially Cliff is saying, the boy is lazy. He's trying right. to figure his way. It is a wonderful show because then comes the end where through the work with, with um, counseling, et cetera, et cetera, there's that wonderful graduation, which is so very unlike the Hillman graduation, where you walk up, you get your diploma, and the president knows you by it. We now confer upon you out there at NYU, and that you've all graduated. And Cliff says, why did we pay all that money? We could have just bought him a robe and a hat <laughs> and set him out. <laughs> I want to play a clip from The Daily Show, and then I want to 
use that to, to talk about something on the other side. Take a look at this, folks. Who is Barack Obama? It's simple. He's Cliff Huxtable. <laughs> How is he Cliff Huxtable? Well, for starters, they're both married to hot lawyers. <laughs> Both work out of offices on the west side of their houses, and both have unrealistically cute daughters. Kind of plays off something that was in the New York Times back in, 19, in uh, last year. It says, The Cosby Show, which began in, on NBC in 1984 and depicted the Huxtables, an upwardly mobile black family, a departure from the dysfunction and bickering that had characterized some previous shows about black families, had succeeded in changing racial attitudes enough to make an Obama candidacy possible. I'm just curious what your take is on that. Did this show pave the way in some ways for a President Obama? Well, I think you've got, I mean, you, you, you got this show which changed the way um, white America and black America looked at the, the black middle class. Um, but at the same time, you had uh, 24 that had a black president. You had, you know, so many movies that had black presidents. So I don't know if you could really uh, I, I, don't, I don't think. But this was 1984. This was this was a long time ago. Did it? Yeah, I, I think it. As, as I started to say, I think it definitely changed the way people saw, uh, you know, black people in terms of you know reality and and the way they were being portrayed, as opposed to the stereotypical ways. Um, but I don't know if you know Cosby could you know can, can really take the claim for Felicia. I agree with Malcolm. I, I do. I think that um, I think that what the show does, and not just in America, but around the world, is clearly demonstrate that people are much more alike than we could ever be different. And given the opportunity, we are willing and wanting to embrace the likeness. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we did. You work on. You're the latest. Tell them how you feel. With, about uh, your work and the show, but you've had your own series. I have had my own series, and um, with the content that we had, they said, well, did you get those ideas from the Cosby Show since you were on such a very uplifting African-American family type of show? And I said, it's all subconsciously embedded in my system and the people that I worked with. And I think that right now we're missing that in our TV. We have the Cosby Show. My brother, who's 17, and his younger friends watch it. We need more shows like this, and it's hard and difficult because there's not a lot of strong people like Mr. Cosby out there ready to just put their foot down and say no. You know what I'm saying? We need it like this. This is what we have to show. This is what we need to teach the audience that are ignorant in the ways of what they think um, African-American families look like. And I think that we need it again. What's well, interesting okay, is about 30 it, seconds, Bill. they use our show. <clears throat> But don't forget, there were a whole bunch of white shows on. And, and, and media kept saying, this is a real family, Roseanne. This is a real family, married with children. This is a real family, Bart Simpson. This is a real family. <laughs> you know, so, I, I mean, they were all coming against us. Against us. We had a psychiatrist who was making corrections... And we were saying words, giving information to parents so that they would have choices of how to react to their children. I think, I think the Simpsons had that, too. <laughs> <laughs> and they were a real family. Remember that, right? Hey, guys, thanks for sticking around. Thank, thank Appreciate you. it. Great to see you all. Thank you. And they're going to stick around and answer some viewer questions in our next hour. Don't forget the 25th anniversary commemorative edition DVD collection of The Cosby Show is now available. Up next.